Hi everybody, welcome to Synthetic Biology 1. In this video, we're going to clean up a PCR product. I just did my PCR, but in these tubes, the reaction mix is full of reagents, and what I'd like to have is a clean piece of DNA. In a very simple protocol, I will purify DNA from the reagents uh, so I can use it in further experiments. Let's begin. What I need is a collection tube. A mini column to filter the different compounds. Membrane binding solution. A wash solution. The necessary pipettes and pipette tips. Uh, a bottle in which I can uh, discard all my solutions. And of course, uh, an, uh, a bottle to discard my pipe tips. So, I will first add some membrane bind solution to my PCR reactions. This membrane bind solution, as already the name says, more or less, uh, will make sure that my product will bind to the column. After a few washing steps, I will, uh, I will release the DNA from this column. But first we need to bind it. So I'm going to add the same amount of volume of binding solution to the volume I have in every PCR reaction. I have 25 microliters of volume in each PCR reaction, so I will also add 25 microliters of membrane bind binding solution. I have three PCR products to clean up, so prepare three columns. And I give them the labels one to three so I know exactly in which tube I pipetted which solution. So now 50 microliters is going to go into every column. Okay. And the next step is to uh, centrifuge the liquid through the mini column. So I'm going to place the tubes into the centrifuge. And I'm going to centrifuge for one minute at 1600 times G. So in the next step, I'm going to use 700 microliters of column wash. That will wash away all the reagents. Um, but the DNA will, be a, will still stick to the column. So this uh, will enable us to get rid of all the compounds that we don't want to have in our final product. And again, we have to centrifuge. So, 
um, for one minute at 16,000 times G. So the flow through is something we will not need anymore. So I'm going to pour it off. And I'm going to wash again. This time with a little bit less volume, I will use 500 microliters of column wash. Now when you use a new bottle of column wash, it's important to check if you added ethanol to the solution. If you forgot to do this, your cleanup will not work. You will lose your DNA on the way. So always be careful. So I'm going to again centrifuge the, the tube, but this time for a little bit longer. Uh, the same speed, but for five minutes. So again, this is our garbage. We're not going to use this anymore. So I'm throwing it away. Um, and sometimes it's, um, it's helpful to just spin the tubes one more time to remove, for one minute, to remove all the, uh, the extra liquids just in case there's still something there. Okay, so our, our, our mini columns should be clean, um, but there might be some residual ethanol that we would like to evaporate from the column. So it's good to wait for 15 to 30 minutes and just leave the columns at room temperature before you go to the next step. Our ethanol should, uh, should be evaporated now uh, and it's time to elute the DNA from, from the column. Therefore, I, uh, I took some clean Eppendorf tubes. I'm going to label them with the same numbers I gave the columns. So one, two, three. So again, I know exactly which column belongs to which tube. And I will add 50 microliters of nuclease-free water. So this is super sterile water that does not have any enzymes in it that could potentially break down your DNA. You know, we don't want to end up with uh, some broken DNA in our tubes in the end. So this water should be safe to use. I'm going to add that to every column. I will incubate for one minute at room temperature before I go to the, to the last centrifugation. So finally, replacing Our clean tubes with the columns in the centrifuge. And again, one minute at 16,000 uh, G should be sufficient to get all the DNA out of our uh, column and into our tubes.
So here it is. We don't need these columns anymore. Our DNA should now be inside our tubes. So here it is. This is our purified DNA. You can now use it to uh, construct plasmids with it or to send it for sequencing. So this is a very useful basic protocol that um, you will probably will be using a lot of times if you do synthetic biology work. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.